so student as we are on chapter 2 the topic king farmers and town so in our today class we will discuss on the topics town and trade and urban populations how inscription was been deciphered and what are the limitation of the inscription so how to we have seen that many urban center that emerged in several part of the subcontinent um uh, from 6th century bc and from that urban center many has become very strong and uh, powerful and that has become the capital of mahajana pad and where this major or important urban center was been located we have seen that it has been located in that particular area where there was an easy access of Uh, trade and communication was available uh, for example if you will talk regarding patliputra which is located in the river rhine route which is was which was the capital whereas ujjain which was an important trading center we have found that it was located in the land route where it was very easy for it to have its trading purpose and other one was a pur which was located in the coast that is where the sea route began as because it was located out there for its trading so that it can do its trading through sea so we have seen that many important uh, center urban center has been uh, located on the basis of its trade so there are many other important uh, cities was also there like mathura which has become important uh, uh, commercial Uh, culture and political activity has been seen out um, there so the important center which has uh, urban center which has emerged in the 6th century bc in that uh, important urban center there were many towns were there such as administrative town culture town commercial town religious town uh, political town and many others town were been found so now let us discuss on this now the town and trade as the urban center that has started or emerged in the 6th century bc there were different type of towns such as administrative town military town religious town culture town commercial town and many more from among this town and city the one which is used to be powerful and strong that would become the capital city and that capital city used to be fortified that means this city were been protected against foreign attack and in capital city uh, who used to stay in that capital city king and his ruling elite used to stay now about this urban center from where we used to get information now let us discuss the sources which help us to know about it uh, as the king and his ruling elite used to stay in the capitals uh, it has become a center of many activities such as trading uh commercial culture religious activity now the sources which provide us information about them are artifact and votive inscription now artifact a wide range of artifact have been discovered such as a fine pottery bowl this is and the pottery bowl and the this is uh, which were been polished ware were been used by the rich people as because it was expensive and uh, they could afford to buy it whereas the uh, common people can't afford to buy that now apart from that ornament tools weapons vessel was also been discovered which were made of materials such as gold silver copper bronze ivory glass steel and terracotta now the second important sources which give us information about what type of people used to stay in the urban center we get information from the votive inscription as this votive inscription belong to the 2nd century bc and this votive inscription especially um, we can say have used to have a records of the gift that was been made to the religious institutions and this votive inscription uh, in the is was a special kind of inscription and in this inscription and uh, the name of the donor used to be mentioned and sometime the donor occupation was also be mentioned so from this uh, inscription we came to know that what type of people used to stay in the urban center that is people such as washing for weaver scribe carpenter porter goldsmith blacksmith religious teacher merchant etc they used to live in the town which we get information from the votive inscription now sometime in this inscription the gills and strings 
it was also been mentioned now who were the guilds the guilds were an uh, organization or an association of uh, craftsmen and merchant who used to considerably take part in the production of the crafts that means what the guild used to do is that they used to collect the raw material uh, make production and sell the finished product in the market and, and the most important uh, thing was that to be the member of the guild was an honor as because they were been treated as a skilled labor and they used to get respect in the society too now next one we will move on to the trade in subcontinent and beyond now from the 6th century bc land and river routes uh, have extended various direction which has connected across the arabian sea to east and north africa and west asia although the bay of bengal to southeast asia and china now the trade route usually used to be controlled by king uh, that is the one who used to pass through this trade route the king used to give protection in exchange of prices uh, that is uh, if you provide certain amount to the king then the king used to ensure that you can use his trade freely and without any hindrance during your trading purpose now the one who used this uh, trade route include like a peddler who probably traveled on foot and merchant who used to travel with caravans of bullock cart now this was one of the way of the king to collect tax from the people as well as uh, it was the king to assert its dominant power so this was basically the king to collect taxes from the people and secondly the king used to assert his dominant power that he is very proof that he is very powerful now uh, we have already discussed that the urban center is being located in, located in the river rhine and sea route now this center and um, were been extensively engaged in trade as a sea route uh, to do trading to the sea route used to be very risky but the trading to the sea route has proved highly profitable and we have got many evidence of it as a successful merchant who has uh, done trading to the sea route has become an enormous rich person as a lot of goods were been transported uh, from one place to uh, another uh, in goods uh, it used to include the raw material finished product or salt grain clothes metal ores uh, stone timber uh, medicinal plant these are the goods which used to be transported from one place to another now further the trade is not only confined to the political boundaries that is uh, within the kingdom trade does not used to take part that means trading used to be done with the other country other kingdom too for example if we will talk regarding the spices which has got high demand from the roman empire that is the roman empire used to have a high demand of the spices from the indian subcontinent so this has proved as and provide as an evidence that the trading was not confined to the political boundary that is trading used to be done with the other kingdom too now another one is our the coin and king out here what we will see is that the coin has facilitated the trade and exchange there were the punch mark coin that was basically made of silver and copper you could see the image of the punch mark out here this is a punch mark uh, coin image now punch mark uh, because uh, during that time on metal a uh, symbol was engraved or punch and hence the name punch mark was been given and out here you can see the one who studies about the coin or the one who has excavated regarding the study of the coin they were called as numismatic that is the one who study about the coin now this coin was issued by the kings however there was uh, even speculation that the banker and merchant also used to issue the coin now how we get information about it we came to know about it as the coin used to bear the names and image of the ruler so from there we get the information now the first ruler 
who issued coin was the Indo Greek. The Indo Greek was the first to issue the coin. Now, who was the Indo Greek? As we know that many Greek had come to India, for example, Alexander who invade, came to India and invaded the northern western part of India. Second was the Seculus Nicator who came during the time of uh, Chandragupta Maurya. However, the Indo-Greek kingdom has emerged after the decline of the Mauryan Empire. Now, when the Mauryan Empire has uh, declined, we have seen that uh, this empire has divided into several kingdoms and most probably the northwestern part of this kingdom was constantly attacked and so around uh, or we can say so about in uh, 180 BC Demetrius has invaded this subcontinent and he conquered Afghanistan, Punjab and part of Punjab and this has led to the establishment of Indo-Greek kingdom and this kingdom has lasted for about 2nd century BC to 1st century AD as the king has an included both the Indian culture and the Greek culture. So, it came to be known as Indo-Greek. And about Indo-Greek, we get information through um, coin only. As uh, we know that the first gold coin was been issued by the Kusanas and the coin which was been issued by the Kusanas were identically in weight as compared to the coin that was been issued by the Roman Empire. And in the uh, southern part of India, many Roman Empire coins were being discovered. Now, which has given us the fact or provide us evidence that there was a good relation between the Roman Empire as well as Indian subcontinent through trade. That means the Roman Empire coin which has been found in southern India in the Indian subcontinent has provided us an evidence that they were having a good trading relation that is between the Roman Empire and the Indian subcontinent. Now coin was uh, also been issued by the tribal republic uh, such as Yodhis of Punjab and Haryana in the first century and archaeologists have found thousand copper coin that was been issued by the Yodhis. You can see the image of Yodhis king uh, coin out here. Now some of the most outstanding coin were issued by this Gupta. This was the Gupta uh, ruler coin. Now this coin was very extraordinary and purity was there. And this coin has facilitated long distance uh, transaction from which king also been benefited and king was has become more wealthier. So this is the image of the Gupta coin. Now uh, in the 6th century there was a decline of the use of the gold coin. As a historian has suggested that there might be an uh, economic crisis due to which there was a decline of the use of the gold coin. Some have said that the Roman Empire had collapsed as a result of which trade uh, with Indian subcontinent has hampered due to which uh, the gold coin was being uh, used less or there was a collapse of the gold coin. And some have said that the emergence of the new town and new network of trading was started and during that time due to that the there was a decline of the use of the gold coin but so no one can say in surety that what was the reason of decrease in the use of the gold coin but uh, it is uh, sure that all these coins are of great source of information and knowledge uh, with respect to the condition that evolved during that time Next one we'll move on to back to basic uh, that is how our inscription deciphers. So out here we will study about uh, deciphering the Brahmini script. Uh, in the very beginning of this chapter we have described that how James Princip has recorded the script in 1830s. He has recorded two script that was Brahmini script and the Kharusthi script. Now the Brahmini was a script uh, which was used in Ashoka inscription 
Now, to decode this Brahmini script, the James scholar, what they have done is that they have taken the help of Indian Pandit and they have compared the Brahmini script with Devanagari script. Like uh, Devanagari script uh, used Hindi language, uh, whereas Brahmani script used the Prakriti language, the language um, that ordinary people used to speak during that time. But uh, now, with the help of comparison method that James Princip in 1838 was able to decode the Brahmani script, you can see the image out here. This is a Brahmani script. Uh, this is a text of the Brahmani script. This is a Devanagari one. By comparison method, it became able for the gem scholar to decode the Brahmani script. Now, next one, how Kharusti was read. Now, uh, this Kharusti was been used by the Indo-Greek. Uh, regarding Indo-Greek, we have studied that they were the ruler of uh, Northwest India. Now, the they, that is the Indo-Greek, what they use, they used to make coin. Now, what they have done is that they used to make coin, they have made both the coin that is Indo Greek and in Karusti. That means they have made both the coin in Indo Greek and in Karusti. Now, to decode the Karusti, the James scholar compare these two that is Indo Greek and the Karusti coin. Now, as we all know, that in coin ruler name used to be written there, for example, uh, out there the king name or the ruler name used to be men, uh, written in the coin. Now, for example, Apollo Dutch, it was in ruler, its name was been uh, written both in Indo Greek coin in, and in Kharosthi coin. Now, the letter, first letter that is A, was written in Indo Greek also in Kharosthi also. Now, James Scholar, uh, what they have done is that to read, they were knowing to read the Indo Greek language. Now, they have decoded the Kharosthi script by read with the help of the first letter of the ruler so this is how the comparing the two script that is of indo greek and the karosti the james scholar was able to know or they were able to read the karosti script uh, now in book uh, as we have seen that for ashokamini terms was been used like uh, devanam piya piya dasi as the term devanam piya it used to denote that someone who is a beloved of God and the Piyadasi was the one uh, that someone who looks upon other as kindness. So being Asuka as a humble and kind hearted for him, this name terms like Devanampiya and Piyadasi was being used. So in inscription, it provides a great deal of information uh, regarding many ruler, regarding as provided as a source of information and knowledge for us. But however, there was a limitation in inscription as well. As being a source of evidence, it has got some limitation. What are the limitations? First of all, we will see the technical limitation. As uh, in the technical limitation, we have discussed two points. That is a damaged inscription and a limited number. Now, sometime uh, it happened that the letter that has been inscribed in the inscription they get fainted in hindi we call it become dhunla type it can't be visible in clear vi visibility was not there till when it used to reach to the epigraphy so that particular uh, clear vision the epigraphies was unable to get now secondly in numbers of cases what we have seen that inscription are damaged or the letter were missing from the inscription due to broken or something happened. So further, uh, these inscription are limited in number. As the inscription were limited in number as well as uh, it became very difficult to read uh, uh, of, due to ability of different types of script was been found out there in the inscription. So this is uh, because we have seen it become difficult for us to go through the inscription as because the script of the inscription was not fully decoded so the historian and epigraphy have given us different opinion regarding that now secondly was that now the word that was been used in uh, inscription till now the exact meaning that is uncertain meaning was been found in the inscription means 
till now the exact meaning was not been found so as a result of uh, this there are a lot of aptitude because the language code is not been decoded completely so we are unable to get a certain exact meaning of the text that was been uh, written in the inscription now thirdly to understand inscription we need uh, used to have certain corroborate fact or evidence or material we can say like uh, artifact to understand this complete meaning so as this material was in our artifact was very limited so to understand the inscription was very become a very difficult task for the epigraphist now other problem that epigraphists have faced is that the inscription used to lack certain fact or information uh, lack of uh, significant information which we are discussing as during that time which thing was considered important or they used to feel that that is very important they used to think that they should be retained or engraved in the inscription might not have any importance or value now as the thing which is very politically or economically now which are very important for us might not be important during that time so as a result of which we have seen that there was a dead or lack of important inscription so at the end in the conclusion what we can say is that as a result the epigraphy uh, all in all does not provide us the full understanding of the condition of that time but whatever might be the limitation however it continue to be relevant that means an important or uh, very uh, significant source for important sources for the historian to know about that time period so our chapter that is a part 1 chapter 2 kings farmers and town we have completed so thank you